Hello and welcome. I am Deji Badimasi. The Nigerian government, uh, through the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, has approved an increase of 340 percent in, ele in electricity tariff now for customers under the Band A classification. According to uh, the commission's uh, vice chairman, Musili Oseni, Band A customers will begin to pay 225 naira kilowatt per hour from the current uh, 66 naira. Now, for broader context, Band A customers are those who enjoy 20 hours of electricity supply daily, and they represent 15 percent of the 20, of the 12 million electricity customers now in the country and let me say the majority of them are actually found in urban areas so Usaini disclosed that the commission had downgraded some customers on band a to band b due to non-fulfillment of the required hours of electricity that's about 40 percent of the nation's power provided by the electricity distribution company he further revealed that uh, the commission had also ordered that the majority of the feeders which did not meet the 20 hour supply threshold before now would be downgraded to lower bands in a bid to protect consumers uh, from exploitation. Now, the decision for these tariff adjustments is linked to the recent increase in the base price of natural gas, uh, which was raised from $2.18 per metric million British thermal unit to $2.42 by the Nigeria Midstream and uh, Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authorities. Uh, there's also the issue of inflation, of course, and uh, the exchange rate. But business operators have been pushing back against the increment, saying it will make things worse for them. Joining me now to discuss this is Senior Manager Oil and Gas and Power at Anderson, Nigeria, Tomita Kwekalade. And also joining us on the program is Ade Tayo, Ade Benle, who is a convener, convener now and Executive Director of Power of Nigeria. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming on the program. Um, let me start with you, uh, Adetayo. Uh, give me your take now on, on this increment. Would you say it's justified? Well, um, it, it's interesting because I've had, I've had this same question thrown at me, you know, on different platforms. And um, what I usually respond with is the fact that... Um, you know, uh, almost everything, mm. almost everything from the macroeconomic uh, indices has changed. Absolutely. And um, uh, it, this, this tariff increase is just a follow through, you know, of mm. such. I mean, um, the last tariff review that we are operating was done in December 2022. And as I then, the dollar rate was about uh, 440. Mm. That was the dollar rate that was used to set it. Um, but since then, dollar has not been stable. Uh, we have issues. We have we have challenges with our inflation rates. We have challenges with um, the price of gas as well. So if all the indices that set the tariff, you know, has not remained the same. You know, all the inputs have not remained the same. Why do we expect the outputs to remain the same? Um, one thing that Nigerians also need to understand is that we are uh, the, the system has kept that tariff since that December 2022 because government, you know, stepped in to pay mm. subsidies. Uh, and um, the interesting part of it is that since December. I have been like the one man campaigner, you know, saying it is not sustainable. Part of the, uh, uh, how will I put it, uh, the results, you know, of uh, maintaining that subsidy is that we are not able to demand the quality of service that we should be getting because the prices we, the prices we are paying is not, is not, is not, um, uh, it's not cost reflective of the pro the product that we are selling, that that we are using. Oh, oh, okay, I'm I'm going to come back to you, but let let me come to you, Timmy. Talk about, one of the problems is that Nigerians, most Nigerians, still do not understand that um, 
the, the power sector has been largely privatized, that it's no longer a government-run enterprise. So they, they're used to getting, we were used to getting free power in the past. Uh, people just can't understand why they have to pay more now and why they have to pay what, what is known as, as cost-reflective um, uh, uh, tariff. And even when you look at what the government has done now, it's not as if the entire subsidy has been removed. It's, it's only just been probably removed for, for just about 15% of the consumers. So, so help us, help us to, to, to understand, um, you know, the, the basics and the, the reasons behind these adjustments and the hike. And, you know, eventually, are, are we down the line, are we going to see a situation where the entire subsidy would, would have to go? Well, thank you very much for that question. So if, if you think about it, yeah, uh, I would say maybe at some point it would have to go, and that's what every market operator basically is asking for. But then we also have a regulator, and that's where government comes in. Hmm. Uh, and I mean, to add to what um, the other speaker mentioned earlier, uh, we could answer that question from two perspectives. You could look at it from the angle of, uh, are we looking at the pure economics, so or are we looking at the social situation? And so... Uh, Nigerians will be justified in a way, uh, going from the fact that you need uh, the, the background to say that we're coming from that regime where everybody was just satisfied with not paying for power. You go to the military cantonment, for instance, they hardly pay. At some point, we even had the joke that Asso Rock was also defaulting. Mm. So, I mean, it's something that is really uh, a, a big issue. And of course, it's not sustainable, if I should say, for that sector. And that's one of the issues that we've had in that sector uh, for, for, a, uh, for a long time. So for us to have a working power sector, we need to get to a point where it's fully deregulated. Is it the best for, uh, for Nigerians at the moment looking at the economic indices because it impacts the household, it impacts uh, the manufacturers, it impacts everyone at the same time? Maybe not. Uh, is, is there a way to find a balance uh, uh, here, here and there? Maybe there could be, but again, government has a role to play in, in achieving that. But uh, when we look at the parameters, just like it's being said, uh, based on the MITO, uh, that's the multi-year tariff order. Mm. Uh, there is meant to be a major review every five years, and of course, minor review every year based on exchange rates, Nigerian exchange rate, the inflation rate in Nigeria, the inflation rate, even in the US, the exchange rate Naira to dollar, and of course, the gas price, and all of these parameters have changed significantly from the last time when uh, we had a change mm. in, 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 in the uh, tariff. So really, it's justified from an economic perspective, but we might need to look at it here and there from the social side of things, especially given what we've seen with full subsidy removal at the same time or reduction, I, I, I should say. And, and that's where the challenge is, isn't it, um, uh, Adetayo? Uh, because all, all of these things are happening at the same time. Yes, uh, it just might be necessary to remove this subsidy, especially when we've been told that, you know, at, at the moment, the government has a, a subsidy areas in the, in, in the region of $2.3 billion. Uh, that has not been paid. Uh, you just can continue to pile up more. But, but then all of this happening at the same time, you have fuel subsidy removal, there's the exchange rate volatility, which is hitting businesses hard. And then you look at um, the, the majority of uh, those in the band A classification. Uh, the majority of them, of course, will be businesses because these are businesses you have in in. In, in urban centers where they enjoy sometimes uh, up to that 20, 20 hours uh, power supply. I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering, how, how do they deal with this? We're going to be very sincere with ourselves. Um, the, the, the true cost of electricity, right, in, in the status or in our present situation, uh, from these industries that we are thinking are going to be badly affected, I, I, I think um, we we'll realize that uh, they are paying more at the moment per kilowatt hour. When you break it down, the mm. cost of buying diesel or running their generators, uh, the cost of the blackout itself, the lack of electricity itself, mm. they eventually pay more than That's that. That's true. So if we are coming from uh, a regime of... Um, uh, being you know heavily subsidized to now having a minimum of 20 hours in a day that you can convert you know uh, you can take away your generators you can uh, 
uh, reduce any other intervention, you know. I mean, I don't think, uh, this thing is a narrow and cobalt situation. We need to be, I mean, I, I, no matter what, I want to look at it. If an industry is in a band A and is guaranteed a 20 hours minimum, what that does is that is production is less dependent on generators Absolutely. or alternative Absolutely. sources of energy. What that does is that it takes away the huge investment into diesel, uh, yeah, into generator, into solar backups there and there. It takes that and turn it into paying your true cost of electricity. Now, when you have such regular electricity, then you can now close your eyes and say, this is the cost, this is your true cost of, 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 of production. So if, I, I don't know, I have, I have seen some arguments today that says, oh, uh, industries will shut down, Cadbury will shut down. But I think Cadbury will be very glad if they can get 20 hours of grid supply. Because what that does is that they can now run more shifts, they can now run at a cheaper cost, they can now employ more people, you know, that is the argument. And you see, this, our welfare attitude to electricity is where, why we are where we are today. You know, um, I mean, there was a period in the, our history, in our, in our psyche, in our mentality, that everything is being done by government. Uh, ordinary road is government road. Uh, water, government water. I mean, if you're a Yoruba, you know, I mean, I grew up in Yoruba, so you know, I know Jobani. Omi, Jobani. I mean, they attribute everything to government. Now, part of the thing, argument that we're also not taking cognizance of is that, yes, it was government light until uh, mid uh, 2000s, uh, 2004, 2005, when the Electric Power Sector Reform Act was enacted, you know, that brought in private players into generation, it brought in private players into distribution, and the government held on to transmission. Now, what happens in that case is that we have private individuals buying gas yeah. to generate power. They generate power, send it to transmission, transmission sends it to distribution. Along the line, we have what we call the ATC and C, the technical, commercial, and collection mm -hmm. losses. Commercial losses in, you know, I mean, in varying form, collection losses in energy theft, uh, people that fuse, I mean, I'm in general, why should I pay for electricity? Meanwhile, this electricity is owned by a private person. Now, the, the, the recent um, poor electricity service that we had, early this January, between January yeah. and that's just telling out recently, was simply because we have we are been owing gas suppliers so much that we can't pay them. Mm. You refer to the $2.3 billion um, debt to gas suppliers. I mean, I use this analogy all the time. I own a, ba a bakery, right? I do the most fabulous bread that you can get in the area. Will you say because you are hungry, you will walk into a restaurant, you will eat, and tell them you are coming back? You will pay their, their service. And before, I mean, in this Abuja per plate before, if you go to most of these restaurants, you will get plates of uh, food for like maybe 400, 450. Now, the minimum you will get it in Abuja today is about 1,200, 1,300, depending on what you eat. So why did you say because you are hungry? They should still be collecting that same 400 naira they are collecting a year ago. So why is the case of electricity different? You see, I will continue to say this. We need to work, and I, I, this is why I fault the government. Because the government is not making it easy. You know? The government is also not making it easy. As at the MITO 2000, um, 2022 that came into effect, in the uh, December 2022 MITO order that came out. As at that MITO order, Subsidy has been phased out for most of the major bands, the band A and B. And, 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 I think and by the way, that, that might order, been, I suppose, was suspended. It, it, was, it was actually suspended. Is the, my, it, was not, it was not suspended. It was frozen. Yes, that, that's, that's what I mean. Until, that's what I mean. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it was frozen. So what it means is that the, the electricity, what we were buying when dollar was 400 naira, 440 naira in December 2022, the same price that we are paying for the same product when dollar has gone as high as 1009 that is just coming back now so if our people really really do i mean see there is there are other there are other you know emotional arguments that we can put in which means that i mean which is to say oh does that mean that i don't deserve to have um, electricity because 
because uh, I mean, living in the poor mm. area. But what you don't realize, what people don't realize most times is that why they created the bans in the first instance is because uh, the quality of service that comes to those eyebrow areas that has been termed as band A's mm. is different from the quality of service that goes to places that has been termed as band B, B C, and uh, C, D, or E. You understand? The kind of infrastructure that exists in such places are different. The kind of infrastructure you will get in a place like uh, Ikoyi is different from the kind of infrastructure you, you will get in oh, a place okay. like I'm, 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 Let, let me just there. interject. I mean, uh, you, you, you've, you've been making a very brilliant argument. But let me come to you. Um, uh, I'll come to you, Timmy Topper. You know, it, it's... It's, you, you, you hear the arguments of Adetayo, a wonderful argument, but, but then the question is, you look at the infrastructure we have and all of that, do you think, from, from what you know, do you think, um, you know, Nigeria has got the infrastructure, so to speak, to sustain, for instance, 24, I mean, even 20 hour of uh, public power supply, especially to this 15% um, of uh, con consumers we're talking about now, the, the consumers in Band A, because um, if, if you say, look, people should pay more and uh, you end up not delivering in terms of service, it can be pretty frustrating. And it's something that I have personally experienced, um, you know, on, on a personal, it's, it's something that I've experienced as well, you know, where an arrangement was made to, 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 for, for premium power, and at some point, it, it, just, it, just, it just wasn't premium anymore. Yeah. Uh, and and that gets us back to the issue of the chicken and the egg. Which one comes first, really? Is it uh, for us to pay for premium service first or, uh, and get the discos and the jenkos to uh, scale up and be able to basically give us what we paid for? Or do we want to get the service first and then we we'll start talking about issues uh, around how to make it up to, 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 to the customers, right? When you think about it very quickly, some of the things that come to mind would be issues around uh, not even having prepaid meters, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the issues that is maybe not very clear to people as it were currently is that even if you are band A and you do not have meters, you're going to get estimated billings. And if you get estimated billings, that could even be more... Uh, I mean, on just for such customers, right? Uh, I mean, I take it that we've had subsidy for too many years, and of course, it's causing some inequality there. And the fact that some people within certain bands would also continue to get power at a lower rate could mean that some of the guys who are in band A will be subsidizing for those who are in the lesser band. And that, that's right? what it is. So, 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 so when you think about it in a broader sense, not just emotional, you will think about it from the point that subsidy is not something that is strange uh, to any other society. It's something that you find even in the developed society. The question always is, where do you give the subsidies to, right? Uh, but of course, we all agree that for us to encourage investment within the power sector, for us to see it work the way we want it to work, then we need subsidy to over time be removed and it won't even surprise you or maybe not that what we've seen so far is even a phased removal even for the band a is not a total removal of subsidy for them it's mm. only reduced subsidy to an extent that government still has to pay so mm. really and truly uh which one comes first do we expect that everybody gets metered and they are sure that they are actually getting what they paid for right and that it's fair to everyone, regardless of the band you're in, you've consumed power for uh, of, of a certain amount, of a certain wattage, then pay for it, and would all be fine by that. And I agree that okay, sometimes in July 2020, but that was in the mid of COVID, right? It had to be suspended until yeah. after COVID, uh, when we then had the, the new mito order being uh, effected. So it, it's really what's what's the best timing we all agree that this has to be taken away at some point for us to have a fair system uh, uh, for everyone and for even the investors to do well and for us to have a blossoming uh, power sector let, let me ask you a detail why do you think it's been difficult to to actually meet our customers in this country why has it been difficult for for the discos to do it and and the second question i would also ask you would be when you look at this, um, this, this, the current arrangement now, uh, 
I, I seem to get the impression that, look, what, what the government is doing now is that it is taking, it is taking away uh, the subsidy responsibility. That it's, it's removing that subsidy responsibility from its shoulders and passing them on to these 15% uh, um, uh, consumers now, so to speak, who are in Bandi. No, 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 yeah. no, no, so, no, to no, no. Correct no, no, me, no, no, please. No. Yes. That, that's not so, right. That narrative is mm. not right. Let's be careful. Okay, with just go on. Site. They are not shifting... They are not shifting this the burden of soft subsidy to the fifteen percent. Mm. What they are doing, basically, with this present tariff order, is to say, okay, those that are benefiting up to twenty hours of power supplies per day minimum, should at the minimum pay as close as possible to the true cost of electricity. The truth is that okay. Let me give you. Let me give. Let me. Let me. Let me give you an instance. Um, there was there was there was a survey on Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, you know, websites that speak to. If you look at all the areas that are covered by these uh, uh, fifteen percent customers that we're mm. talking about, they are all in the highbrow, high income mm. areas. They are in the well. They are the well to dos of the society. Will it be right for us to ask to pay the same amount of subsidy for the well to do? And pay the same thing to, you know, to 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 uh, do those that are in the poor region. The, 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 are we paying? Are we saying the, the top fifteen percent that has been identified should they enjoy the same subsidy like the the bottom fifteen percent should enjoy? That is where the fear so obvi is. Obviously, it's targeted have, subs subsidy. Yeah. It's a, it, it, it now see even anywhere in the world there is nowhere in the world that subsidy is blanket. They don't subsidize the rich. I know in the UK that the higher your income is, the higher the taxes that you pay. So that you can, you know, they can use the money to also try and balance out, you know, mm. the, 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 the other part of the society that is not that well to do. So if they say 15%, let them pay as much as possible, as close to the, to, to the cost of production and this transmission and distribution of the energy that they are consuming. I don't think there's anything wrong in that. And in fact, I was joking on, on, on X, on the social media recently, where I was saying 15% hmm, of the rich are being asked to pay for what they are consuming. They are the ones that are kicking. Now, the poor people are also not joining them to, to kick. <laughs> who is doing who? Do you understand? <laughs> okay. So what is the what is I, the what is I get, the what I get, is the rationale I, I get behind your argument. that? I, I, I really understand your argument. So what is the rationale behind that? So the thing is, we need to again. I will fault the government on this. The government has not done itself any favor by trying to be uh, to be godfather, by trying to be the big brother to everybody, by trying to feed everybody. They have not done themselves a favor by doing that. The moment the power sector is privatized. Hands off completely and let us know we are running at it as a private concern. See, to bring this matter home, I will continue to say it. If I need to go and buy flour to bake bread in my bakery, and because you think your people cannot afford to, uh, to pay the true cost of that my bread, you ask me to sell it at 200 naira instead of 500 naira. I don't have any problem as long as you are paying that shortfall, that 300 naira mm. shortfall that you have created for me. But the government is not even paying that shortfall. So where do you want this course to get money to go and buy the meters that we are, we are talking it's about? It's only natural that at some point you, the business will die. Something suffers. Something gives. And it is that efficiency that gives. It is that money that should be returned to be invested in that sector that but, gives. But, but why, why do you think it's been difficult to even meet our customers? We've been on this for a very long time. Again, I, have, I say, listen, by the grace of God... And at the risk of boasting, I don't blow my trumpet, but I know the amount of advocacy that have gone into metering, closing the metering gap in Nigeria. We went as far, I have gone as far as pushing for independent metering service providers. This was the idea that federal government took up and converted, um, NEC, NEC took up and converted to MAP, the meter set providers today. But it is not even the way I wanted it done. Right now, as I'm speaking to you, I am saying that even NEC should try they should do what I called institutional funding. Do franchising so that I can take up a feeder. I walk in there, take up a feeder, so that as you are paying the 225 per, per, per kilowatt hour, 
I am adding, they added extra 20 naira on it for my meters. It, all these things, you, don't, you, don't, you cannot just pick money from, you can't do, um, uh, what's it called? Um, you can't take loan from the banks to fund this kind of project. You do institutional funding that can take 10 years for you to recoup back. Not a one year, two years loan. Then, let me tell you one of the biggest challenges that we've been having, and I've always been saying it. See, all these things are imported. We don't produce them in Nigeria. There is only one factory in Nigeria that can do end-to-end -end manufacturing. Every other person brings in their raw materials to come and assemble here in the country. Only one factory. And I've, I've pushed that federal government should, instead of using, I mean, the 1.6, between 1.6 and 2 trillion that they were supposed to put on, on subsidy this year. Why don't you turn that money, right? Free tariff, let everybody pay the true cost. But use that 1.6 trillion naira to go to do metering. Give it to all these in industries that are, that, that, that are able. They, are, they have assembly lines already mm -hmm. and all they need is just some incentive. For me, that's the kind of subsidy that I will give. Put this money in, this, in these industries. Let them run shift. We know at the minimum right now that we need about between 8 and 10 million meters to fill up, to meet up our metering gap on record. I know by the time we get into the field, it's, that figure is going to double. So what it means is that if you put that 1.6 trillion naira into meter manuf local meter manufacturing, what it will do is that, one, meter manufacturers in Nigeria, five of you, we identify you. Every other person go and match because of your, of, your, of your facilities. We need 1 million meters from you every month. Do you know what that will mean? They will now be running shifts. They will now employ more people, gainfully em employed. Then people, I see, this thing is a value chain. The people that are going to make these meters are not the same people that are going to install the meters. They are not the same people that are going to be, mm. you know, activating the meters. So it's a very big value chain that creates employment. For right. me, if I become the minister of power today, that's what I will do. And that's what will give direct impact on Nigerians. Then when you now tell me that pay 250 naira for, for electricity, what that means is that I'm going to close my eyes for 24 hours power supply. Or for say for, 50, for 18 hours out on the average, what it means is that I will go into my house, freezers that I don't need, I will put it off. ACs uh, that I don't need, uh, I will put them off. People out would of just use. have to become more disciplined. So that I can, I can conserve my uses. energy. I can conserve mm. the little phones that I have. Then I cannot have work to do to not come and maintain that service. All right. I, I, I'm, I'm afraid we'll, <laughs> I'm afraid we'll just, we just... We, we, mm. At consumption which is not good for our yeah. economy yeah uh, i'm afraid we just have to end it there we, we've actually run out of time i want to thank you gentlemen for coming on the program um i want to thank you timito the senior manager oil gas and power at anderson nigeria thank you so very much for your time and that data they've been lay convener and executive director power of nigeria thanks so very much for this wonderful discussion and thank you for your contributions thank you thank you thank you Thank you. All right, we'll take a short break and uh, we'll be right back. Stay with us, don't go away. Opinions are free, facts are sacred, but truth is universal. How, in practical terms, can we, for instance, de escalate the tension? The president must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places um, the Lake Chad Basin the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the families are for it. On DG360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts, and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians are saying in this uh, part of the world. A new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it, so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for go any governor to look for grant for ranching. Digi360, dissecting the issues.